So uh, from here on, we'll be focusing on a very specific but a very popular class of post hoc explanation methods called feature attribution based local explanation methods. Okay, So I'm going to ex explain each of the terms that uh, I just said right now and that are on the title of this slide. What do I mean by local explanations is the goal of these explanations is to explain individual predictions of any given classifier, right? So we are not talking about a complete description of the global classifier. We are talking about for a singular point uh, the, the let's say there is a model and on a singular point that model is generating a prediction, how to explain that singular prediction is what is the focus of a local post hoc explanation. Okay, that's what we'll be looking at through majority of this talk. And these methods, okay. methods in this... Stop you at the local, uh, just, uh, just a clarifying point on the local. Uh, so you mentioned that it's to explain one sort of model decision. Um, yeah. As opposed to what? What are the other sort of um, ways that are, let's say, non-local? Uh, or... Yeah. So uh, the other, like, let's say, if you say, what is the other options other than local? Is for instance, you could think of explaining the complete behavior of a given model, right? So you you're basically giving a full summary of how this model is behaving on different kinds of data instances. So that's called global explanations. And there is also somewhere like, you know, a granularity that's in between, which is called subgroup level explanations, which is about explaining model behavior on certain subgroups of individuals in the data. Okay. And is like an example, an applied example of a, a global uh, look or global examination is say we're a bank, we're doing credit scoring, we have a possible new model that we want to roll out and we say, okay, we have our data set of 100 thousand previous data points, this model tends to make a lot of decisions based on age uh, mm -hmm. in, in looking at predictions that it made for the existing data set. That's say one, uh, the, the global model look. Yeah. Uh, okay. yeah. Amazing. Yeah, thank you. you can, uh, okay. So uh, now this category of methods that is feature attribution based local explanation methods essentially output feature importances or feature attributions for individual instances. So what we mean is with each feature, they associate some kind of an importance value that captures what is the effect or contribution of that feature on that singular prediction, right? Because as we were just discussing, we are focusing on explaining just one singular prediction uh, with these kinds of methods, okay? Uh, examples of such methods, uh, which several of you might have heard, at least some of these are methods such as line, SHAP, gradient, gradient times input, smooth grad, integrated gradients, and many, many more, right? So those, those are typically the methods that uh, people consider as popular ones in this category. So I'm just going to give- Just, just one, one point on, uh, sorry, to stop, on, on the previous uh, slide, to contrast the output feature attribution, uh, just to, to provide the, the, a little bit of back end. So let's say, I don't know, we have a text, we're doing sentiment analysis. Um, not that it you know applies necessarily that closely to text. So the explanation that we want is based on just the inputs of the model. So which of the inputs in this instance uh, led to that, regardless of whatever else the model knows or stored in its parameters. Uh, yeah, yeah. So all that these methods do is they try to give uh, scores or weights to each of the input features, whether that feature is a word in you know uh, some text that you have presented to the model, or if we were talking about these examples of like the healthcare data and so on, in that case, the feature could be something like a symptom, such as if somebody is coughing, right? So uh, it this these kinds of methods just place scores or weights on each of the input features, which indicate how important that input feature is to the prediction that we are getting from the model. Amazing. And these features can be, I don't know, if it's images, it can be pixels. If it's text, it can be words or tokens. If it's like tabular data, it can be just the fields or, or, or pages. 
And in the context of images, this could be either uh, simple pixels or super pixels of images that have been, you know, constructed using other sort of image segmentation techniques. Like if, you know, there's an object detection that we have done previously, and if we can like just kind of flag out objects within an image, those also could be input features. Thank <laughs> you.